بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. I would like to welcome all of you to webinar number seven. I'm Dr. Sami Yusuf. I'm going to be moderating this webinar. As you know, the battle against the COVID-19 pandemic is still raging, and there are so many leaders around the world who are still trying to make sense of what's going on and what's the best approach uh, to this pandemic. Albert Einstein once said, we cannot solve problems by using the same kind of thinking we used when we created them. In this webinar, we are going to be talking about a different approach that could be utilized by healthcare leaders to navigate through this public health crisis. We'll be talking about the systems approach and high reliability science. And there is no one I know of who could present better about this than Dr. Da Saadi Tahir. Dr. Saadi Tahir is uh, a senior uh, healthcare leadership and management consultant. And he served in many leadership roles in the Saudi healthcare system over the past 40 years. And, still, and he still continues today to provide consultation services to many healthcare authorities and organizations in the country. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Saadi Tahir. Dr. Saadi Tahir, how are you? Yeah, hello, Dr. Saadi. Thank you very, very much. Allah I yeah. truly appreciate the opportunity to to talk about uh, system, systemness, complexity. But before I do that, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, we are in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, these pandemics happen every 30 or 40 years. Uh, in my own lifetime, I have witnessed uh, two other pandemics, one in 1980, that's the HIV AIDS pandemic, and in 1957, when I was uh, first year medical school, when we had the influenza uh, pandemic, uh, but uh, none of those uh, were uh, as uh, brutal and as uh, lethal as the current one, by far. Now, a, a tiny virus has uh, hit the world and it has uh, paralyzed everything and it has reminded us of one simple thing, that uh, this whole world is um, a massive, uh, complex adaptive system. In fact, it is a system of systems. Embedded in that um, system of systems is a large number of subsystems. And these are all complex adaptive systems. We're talking about healthcare, the economy, education, uh, societies, cities, the political system, and, and what have you. And uh, the science of complexity uh, is a very rich science that would uh, help us uh, deal uh, with uh, this, uh, with these uh, systems and subsystems. When, what I want to share with you is some uh, glimpses of that science. It is very rich, it's very robust, and it's available for you to look at uh, uh, using the internet. Uh, we are going to give you some resources that will be available for you to look at. But please, it behooves us now, as Dr. Sami mentioned earlier on in relation to Einstein, it behooves us to look into that system and look into a fresh way dealing with complexity. Now, uh, having uh, said that, let me start by defining what a system is. A system is a group of elements. That's people, processes, information, softwares, and organization. When these elements are com combined, uh, they have qualities that are not present in any of the element themselves. In fact, the uh, some of that element is quite a bit more than the element themselves. And systems have three features or characteristics. They have a purpose and ele some elements or components, sometimes referred to as agents, and they have outcomes. 
The important thing is that a system has an aim. Systems have a purpose. And these aims, the aim determines the, the system. In fact, Demick says without an aim, there is no system or the aim create the system. And this is really a very important concept uh, to keep in mind. Next. Now, what we are dealing with, and that's health system and healthcare system, and all hospital networks are complex adaptive system. But as I mentioned earlier on, the other examples are the whole world, uh, the human body, the immune systems, and uh, many other things. The stock market, for example, is a complex adaptive system. So what are, let's just dissect it and see what are the, the definition of a complex adaptive system. Basically, the complexity or it's complex because of diversity. There is a great number of uh, elements and they are interconnected to each other. And these connections, and I'll keep on saying that these connections are more important than the elements themselves. That's a very important concept to keep in mind in relation to a complex adaptive system. The system is adaptive. It means that the system learns, it alters, it changes, it self-organizes, and it surprises us. Now, the features of the uh, complex adaptive system, again, is the uh, interconnections and uh, therefore the interdependence. The, inter the interconnection between the elements, which are more important uh, than uh, the, the outcome, and uh, the, uh, the feedback mechanisms within the system, whether positive or negative, that are very critical to the next point, which is uh, the process of emergence. The outcomes emerge from self-organization of the system. It's not being controlled. It's not us that did ultimately determine how the system would, uh, would behave. It is the emergence. It is the, uh, the synchrony as the, uh, the interconnection between those elements and the interrelationship that would lead to some new phenomenon that are called emergence. And the evolution of the complex adaptive system is nonlinear. Again, this is extremely important because um, uh, some intervention are quite small, but they result in some significant large effect. In fact, I, some of you may have heard of the butterfly effect. The concept that the flipping of the wings of a butterfly in uh, Argentina, for example, could result in, uh, in, in a storm somewhere in, in Kansas or, uh, or Colorado. So the non-linearity uh, of the system, of complex adaptive system, is very important to keep in mind. And this is totally different from mechanical systems that are linear. Next, please. Now, there are ways of dealing with this complex adaptive system. Uh, the system approach to health is fairly well defined. Now, other industries have been uh, before us in, uh, in using these system approaches and they have uh, achieved a lot of result uh, compared to healthcare. In healthcare, uh, the system approach is uh, uh, fairly, uh, early, the, the utilization is fairly uh, early and somewhat patchy. Now, what do I mean by, what are the examples of system approach? Uh, the fact that uh, the interaction between a human being and the system are important, and there is a robust science. Can we go back, please? There is a robust science of uh, the human factor engineering. Uh, system engineering is, is extremely important and the marriage between engineering and healthcare is now, uh, 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 is now ongoing. 
a production system method, for example, Toyota production system or lean methodology, modeling and simulation that is extensively used now, predictive analytics, uh, supply chain uh, management and operation management and the queuing theory and game theory. All these are, are extremely important using system approach in dealing with, 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 with healthcare. Now, one of the tools, next please, one of the tools that we uh, use in uh, dealing with system approach is the causal loop uh, diagram. And this is a causal loop diagram. It looks a little complex, but uh, really uh, this is a simplified one. Uh, causal loop uh, diagrams are quite a bit more, more complex. And what I want you to, uh, to look at or concentrate on is the red circle. The red circle is basically what happened uh, in this, uh, in this uh, epidemic or pandemic. Uh, there is a number of infectious people that they create a risk of transmission at the personal level that will result in, tra in, in transmission events. And these are feed the positive feedback. Each one is feeding on the other that results in exponential growth of, uh, of the cases. Now, if you look at it purely from, in a simplistic way, uh, uh, the inside of the circle would tell you that uh, uh, there is the risk of transformation from the environment, and then whether the environment is clean or, 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 or not, uh, and whether it is the, uh, contaminated or not. It looks like a simple way of dealing with it. However, the rest of the diagram shows you so many other components are engaged or involved in, uh, in, in, in this system. So, and with not only so many more components, but so many relationships between these components and so many feedback loops, negative and positive, that would result in the outcome. For example, at the top of the slide, uh, the, uh, the, the public performance of protected behaviors uh, is, uh, is, is, is a key part. And this is influenced by uh, communication, by public awareness, by uh, public perception of risk, and, uh, and so on. Again, these are affected by the trust in the authorities, the public outrage that may result in stigma, and in the policy that uh, the government would do that would lead to uh, the interruption of, of the outbreak. The point is that this diagram shows some of the social uh, component of the outbreak. However, if you add to this diagram some other component, for example, the economic, uh, the, the political, the, um, the educational component, the transportation and so on, you can easily figure out a diagram that would show uh, an order of magnitude, more uh, arrows and more feedback. So that's, this is the first point I want to make, is that uh, uh, system thinking and using system tools would help us identify the component, the relationship between the components, and how these components uh, produce uh, some relationship would produce some feedback and this feedback would result in the outcome of the outbreak. Next, uh, next I would like to move to uh, what we use in preparing to address uh, these, um, these outbreak or these uh, unexpected uh, events. And there, there is a rich science uh, 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 available uh, that is uh, massively used by high reliability uh, organization. Uh, it, it is called high reliability science. And basically it is building collective mindfulness within the organization. And uh, this collective mildness, uh, the mindfulness would enable us to discover and manage the unexpected, like for example, this episode before at the early stages. 
This would result in reliability and the reliability of course will be, will be favorable here. Mindfulness is uh, created, is generated through five principles. And these principles are preoccupation with failure, reluctance to simplify, number three, sensitivity, sensitivity to operation, number four, commitment to resilience, number five, deference to expertise. And I will explain very briefly uh, uh, each and every one of those. They are all, uh, uh, next please, they are all available in one of the references that, uh, that you have. Now, the very first one is uh, co preoccupation with failure. Uh, these high reliability organizations are uh, intensely neurotic. They are looking for failure everywhere. And the best metaphor is a mere cat or a squirrel. I mean, these animals are on the lookout for problems and failures to warn the rest of the group. So they search, detect, and report small and emerging failure. They identify them at a very early phase before they become significant. And unfortunately, if you remember this uh, epidemic, if uh, it, uh, it, was, it started in, in China and Wuhan, and if it was uh, identified and reported uh, and dealt with early on, uh, uh, although later on there was uh, a huge uh, effort in, in China, but early on, that first principle of preoccupation with failure wasn't, wasn't, wasn't there. This organization anticipate and specify stuff that they don't, want, they don't want to happen, mistake that they, want, they don't want to make. Uh, they know that proactively, and they build uh, psychological safety. Psychological safety is the ability to ask questions, the ability to uh, uh, bring out a problem, the ability to feel safe, uh, to, uh, to talk. And uh, as you very well know, that wasn't there during uh, the early in the epidemic. Next, please. The next is uh, reluctance to simplify. Uh, these organizations don't think that, uh, don't take things for granted. They are reluctant to simplify. Now, we all know that in order to organize, we all tend to, um, we all tend to uh, uh, simplify things to organize them. However, these organizations have relentless attack on simplification, simplification because the early warning usually comes in the details. And these organizations simplify slowly, reluctantly, and mindful. Next, please. The next one is sensitivity to operation. They know exactly how the system works. They communicate and communicate and communicate, and they all observe operation, and they, they have a clear idea about the big picture. And they have a premium on real-time detailed information available for everybody. They uh, brief and debrief. Uh, we, uh, I'm sure now in most hospitals, this is used for patient safety, for example, of briefing and debriefing through the checklist. Uh, the uh, high, high reliability organization have warning huddles. They have uh, executive walk around, patient safety walk around. And through these daily communications, they manage to understand the operation. Next, please. And they are committed to re resilience. They do have problems and they do have uh, adversity at times, but they are able to recover and they are able to learn from, uh, from this mishap. And their motto is to improvise and to know that the world is unknowable, unpredictable, and incomprehensible and they cannot beforehand see everything. And now there is the concept of VUCA, V-U-C-A, that we all subscribe to. It is a uh, concept promoted by Harvard. VUCA means uh, V for volatility, and this is the era we are living in. V for volatility, U 
for uncertainty, C for complexity, and A for ambiguity. This is uh, the word that help us build resilience. And resilience is built through knowledge, through learning, through building capability and, and capacity and competency. Next, please. Finally, this organization uh, have uh, the, the, the uh, system of, uh, of deference to the expertise. They respect, they, there is hierarchy, but this hierarchy is uh, there for uh, uh, routine time. However, during the unexpected or in high tempo time, the decision making migrates to those with expertise. For example, in uh, aircraft carrier, the sergeant, which is a soldier, is responsible for the takeoff and the landing of these F-15 and 16, and, and he can abort a squadron. Uh, okay, I found and, this on the web for sponsorable for the takeoff and landing of these F-15 and 16. Check uh, it out. Uh, now, uh, 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 for, so for these, uh, organization, uh, they have a flexible decision-making structure and they migrate authority to the front line because the front line is more familiar with the details, more familiar with the system as it is, it is going through fast times. Next, please. So, in addition to uh, uh, respect complexity, respect complexity science, deal with the system as a complex adapt, adapt, adaptive system and uh, deal with the uh, interdependence of the system. What are some of the insights that uh, we have? Uh, I have three that, are, that relate to the national and international insight. And uh, the last one is for institutional uh, system. And uh, number one, is that we really need to have uh, a robust sur surveillance mechanism, a mechanism that uh, would be uh, more effective than what happened early in the course of this pandemic. And we need the health information infrastructure using the electronic system, digital system, that will enable us uh, to have early warning response, to deal, to, to use the EHR, as, uh, as, as, as a method to provide real-time information and data and to build the learning health system. This is a concept that uh, I hope that uh, you would uh, look into and uh, examine more carefully. This is a system whereby you apply, capture and apply evidence and and, and, and generate evidence simultaneously for every, for every patient, for every encounter. In fact, this is already beginning to happen uh, with the rapidity of some of the trials that are happening. And um, you may have heard that Oracle now has provided the White House with the, a mechanism of linking all the trials that are happening for, uh, for, for, for the virus, for, uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, to provide real-time uh, data, real-time analysis and synthesis and perhaps uh, result. We need to have a more adaptable health system. Unfortunately, both in the, in the outbreak that we had in the National Guard a few years ago and uh, now in most systems globally, there wasn't excess capacity, there wasn't anticipation. So Beds were a problem, ICUs were a problem, ventilators were a problem, health, healthcare professionals weren't uh, uh, on, in the top shape, medicine supplies and PPEs uh, were, were issues that you read about them every day all over the world. Now, number three, we need to uh, strengthen coordination between our organization at the national level uh, and uh, at the international level uh, and use, for example, the leadership of WHO and some other international uh, uh, organization. We need to coordinate our responsive and uh, ra the rapid uh, uh, containment. 
and we need to accelerate and use methodology to uh, uh, improve our process of uh, uh, diagnostic vaccines and treatment. And finally, we all need to build the capacity for high reliability organization, including the five components of, uh, uh, of uh, preoccupation with failure, reluctance to simplify, sensitivity to operation, uh, building resilience, and finally, difference to the expertise. So I want to close by saying that this is uh, a massive, massive, unexpected, brutal, the brutal audit to our system. Our health system has failed, but uh, the silver lining, the silver lining is that we are beginning to re to address the, the 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 issues, the problem again using uh, the the new robust complexity science in order to move forward. Dr. Sami, I stop here and. Uh, and pass it to you. Thank you. Are we? Thank you, Dr. Saadi, for, for the beautiful presentation. So uh, if we look at the causal loop diagram that you've explained, uh, my first question is about this. So. What would happen if we just focused on what's inside the circle and forgot all about the feedback signals and the weak and strong signals from this, coming from the system? How would this, un would this undermine the COVID-19 response? It would be, it, it would definitely undermine it, undermine it in a massive way, in a massive way. You see, for, for years and years, for decades, what we have been doing is to, uh, deal with the system as a machine uh, using uh, reductionism. A uh, reductionist approach is to use uh, piecemeal management uh, at uh, the patient level or the department level or the hospital level. When in fact uh, uh, our problems now are, uh, are, are systematic, are, uh, are uh, 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 related to the complex adaptive systems that are made of large number of components. And the components don't reside within that red circle. The components reside outside that circle. And this is related to, for example, public health is one, is one but it's more than public health. It's related to the social aspect, to the economic aspect, political aspect, to uh, to the media, to, uh, uh, to the education, to families, to, to anything, anything that affect our life outside this circle is a part and parcel of dealing with this outbreak. And unless we deal with it in a systematic uh, way, unless we deal with the interdependence between all those components, we will not get the proper or the appropriate response. Great. So one of the concepts that uh, talks about uh, system thinking is, uh, is the phrase that says that a system is more than the sum of its parts. Would you care to explain this, Dr. Saadi, and tell us this does uh, have anything to do with uh, synergism, which is a much more familiar term for healthcare providers? Yes, thank you. Uh, the, again, we, uh, the, the, if you look at the way we have been trained, uh, and I, I started medical school in the 50s, trained in the 60s, and we were trained in, in a totally different paradigm. We were trained in, in dealing with pieces, with the patient one-to-one, -one, with, uh, with, with the clinic, with the hospital, uh, and, uh, and that... Uh, uh, a piecemeal approach is uh, not suitable or, or uh, compatible with the current system. Our system now is formed of a large number of, of pieces. And these pieces, whether they are microsystem within a hospital or 
Mesos, me, micro system is, uh, for example, ICU or emergency department or, or CCU or what have you. These interconnect to department and the department will converge in hospital. But hospitals uh, 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 are, are connected with, with uh, networks and so on. And it's through the interaction of all these pieces that we get the outcome that we desire. And that the synergism between all those pieces, between all those components that results with what is being called convergence. The complex adaptive system self-organizing and it will result with the emergence and the emergence is non-linear. The emergence is uh, what I mentioned on, is the emergence is the results that are quite bigger than the components and it relates to the, to the relationship. And that's what it means that the sum total of the system is, the, is bigger than the component. Now, if you compare that to a car, a car is made such a Chevy is made such that, it, for example, it produces 120 miles an hour. That's it. Uh, if you want to have uh, 200 miles an hour, then you have to redesign it to make it as a, as a Ferrari. Now, complex adaptive system in healthcare is one uh, are totally different. They are uh, self-organizing. They have the process of emergence. You design it such, but then it will it will learn as it goes. It will uh, 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 result in an uh, in, 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 in outcome that are bigger than the. Than, than what you design, and it all uh, it, it all result from the interconnection and the dependence and the relationships. And if you don't deal with those, uh, you defeat the whole purpose of the complex adaptive system. That's quite fascinating, uh, fascinating, Doctor uh, Doctor Saadi. Uh, let me uh, take a step back and talk about something different. So. Uh, one of the fundamental tasks of leadership is uh, framing problems. And uh, Ron Heifetz in his books talks about uh, dividing problems or issues that faces leaders into technical and adaptive. So how would you frame this COVID-19 pandemic? Is it a technical problem or is it an adaptive challenge? Uh, thank you, Dr. Sami. And now, uh, that was a major contribution by Ron Heibitz uh, to, to the whole uh, uh, science of management. And that, uh, as you said, uh, he identified two kinds of problems, a technical problem and adaptive problem. Uh, and, and if you look at what we do, uh, about 10 to 20% of our problems are purely technical. The overwhelming majority, about 80%, are adaptive. Now, what is the difference? The technical problems are problems that are fairly well defined. It's, uh, all the elements are fairly well recognized and all the cause and effect relationships are clear and you can uh, resolve them through algorithm and resolve them through some uh, pouring some technology on them, some fund and uh, command and control and you can resolve them. However, the adaptive stuff is totally different because there is the human element, there is the, 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 the people's element, the, the soft elements, the cultural, behavioral, adaptive element. And these are totally different from the technical in that it requires new and different skills. You cannot resolve them through command and control, you resolve them through uh, appreciation of the workforce, appreciation of, of relationship, the motivation aspect, the intrinsic motivation, and, uh, and, 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 and creating a whole psychological uh, environment such that the culture is totally different. So these are the soft cultural aspect. They are, they are soft because we thought they are soft, but they are really uh, very critical, very important in, in, uh, in moving forward. And the healthcare system 
the health system in general, healthcare system included, uh, most of the problem are indeed adaptive and for this uh, uh, pandemic, the majority of the problem, the biggest problem are adaptive is what's happening now in, in countries and, uh, and society, it's a global problem. But some of it obviously is technical with, with respirator, ventilator, but these are uh, and capacity and so on. This will be resolved uh, fairly soon. They are, they are a lot easier to deal than the bigger, more important, adaptive, uh, cultural and uh, human aspect. That's nice. Uh, and we're seeing the result of this. So uh, changes in behavior and attitude have been very difficult for the society uh, to take it in. Uh, Dr. Saadi, uh, you mentioned during your uh, talk, uh, your experience in the National Guard uh, in the 2015 Ozukamil outbreak. I was there and I, would, I remember some of these uh, memories vividly and Maybe it would be nice uh, if you shared with the audience your experience with the 2015 outbreak and uh, MERS outbreak. And how did we utilize systems approach and that particular uh, response? And what were the lessons learned uh, from that experience? Uh, thank you, Dr. Sami. Now, uh, that was uh, a, a truly, uh, the personal level, that that, that, a scary experience. Um, uh, uh, as you very well know, mers cov is uh, more lethal than, uh, than COVID-19. And uh, we had an epidemic, uh, an outbreak in the, uh, in the summer, 2014, I, I think, that resulted in, the, uh, in complete closure of, uh, of the hospital. And uh, during that time, we were uh, uh, confused, we were scared, but uh, we were able to uh, quickly uh, manage it and uh, resulted in, uh, in a very good outcome. Now, the, 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 my recollection or my experience, my, the, the experience, I think I, I can divide it into maybe three, three things. One is uh, personal. Uh, the, at the personal level, it really it taught me to uh, respect and appreciate uh, the complexity of the system. And uh, uh, that uh, in order to move forward, we really need to deal with it as a, a complex adaptive system. Uh, we started looking at and learning about complexity and, uh, and uh, managing the unexpected. Uh, uh, so we dealt with the system holistically, system-wide, rather than department, rather than just the emergency department. The whole system was one whole thing and we dealt with it as such. As, and uh, use, we used, um, I personally got to get, that was a time when I engaged with uh, complexity science. And once you get into that, you will be spitting. It's such a, a fascinating area that I hope they, that uh, I uh, would have interested some of the audience to get into it uh, uh, once we finish. The second personal lesson is uh, that in relation to leadership. Uh, it was very clear that during the crisis and uh, for the health system as a complex adaptive system, command and control is not the suitable way of dealing with it. The suitable way or the right way is uh, a distributed leadership, is empowering uh, uh, leaders at all levels, not just at the C-suite, uh, to manage their, um, their, their areas using agile, multidisciplinary team, uh, teams that know exactly uh, what, what they are doing and honors the, the point number point number five in managing the expected, and that is different to the expertise. Now, at the organizational level, um, uh, you know, the outbreak, you, you probably remember, was caused by five things. And if I remember now, number one was the crowding in the emergency department, the huge crowding. And that was related to 
managing the flow, which again, uh, uh, part of uh, using system, systemness and, uh, and system science. Uh, the overcrowding was compounded by uh, diagnostic error. And as you know, this is now one of uh, the important pieces in, uh, in, in healthcare system. Uh, a patient was diagnosed, and uh, but it, it, it was misdiagnosed, delayed in diagnosis for three days that resulted in an overcrowded emergency department to the spread of the infection. The third thing is that our own health worker were not, were not on top shape regarding using the appropriate infection control measure and using uh, PPEs uh, that resulted with the increase in, uh, in, in the number of infection. The uh, fifth thing is that we did not have the capacity to deal with it. The, uh, the, the intensive care unit was uh, again overcrowded. The hospital was fully occupied. So we had to create some capacity by, uh, by, by closing the hospital, discharging patient. And uh, we didn't have capacity in so many other areas. So that was one other uh, thing. So we have learned all these things. Unfortunately, all of these elements are present in globally in uh, most countries and most hospitals, whether they are advanced. If you look at the situation in the NHS, in the National Health Service in, in the UK or in New York, all these the problems are there. And, and, and I think that uh, that, uh, that is a lesson for all, all of us to, uh, to learn from and prepare for the uh, next uh, uh, event. And the next event is going to happen, not necessarily an epidemic of a virus, but uh, as, as something uh, similar. On the positive thing for, for our operation in the National Guard, we have already, we, we had started three, four years earlier in, in building uh, a high reliability organization. We engaged with, uh, with the Joint Commission and others to build the HRO, building the five principles, and that really helped us. For example, we, had, we already had uh, electronic uh, 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 reporting system that enabled us to uh, identify uh, errors uh, 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 quickly. We, um, we were not simplifying. We had uh, a risk management committee I used to chair. Uh, we do road cause analysis and identify the smallest of problem and take care of them. Uh, we had sensitivity to operation. Uh, we were uh, uh, already applying surgical checklists, but they, we had patient safety walk around, executive walk around. Unfortunately, we weren't uh, uh, having huddles and I hope that anybody who hears me will, uh, will, will apply um, uh, daily huddles in, in, their, in their hospitals. And uh, we were building resilience uh, through uh, connection with IHI to build ca capability and competencies and capacities. Uh, and uh, then uh, later we enriched that by training some 14,000 employees in the infection control principles and, and PPEs. And uh, uh, we, we didn't have uh, a robust system for, um, for deference to, to, to expertise and uh, migrating authority, but I think following that, we, uh, uh, we, we, we did that. Now, we also learned that we need to have, get some help for more insight, and we connected with, um, with the CDC, with, uh, uh, with the Ministry of Health, with the University College of London, with the WHO, and with Johns Hopkins Hospital. We had partnership with the Ministry of Health and with the rest of the Ministry of the National Guard, including the engineering. And uh, we uh, really learned how to build a capacity for testing. And we ramped up our capacity for testing by having uh, the, 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 the capability in all branches of the National Guard in all region. And we very quickly, we were able to do 140, 150 PCR tests on daily basis. 
We had massive training program and uh, we um, uh, very quickly uh, increased the capability of our, uh, our, our work, uh, workforce. So uh, uh, these are some of uh, the lessons that, that I remember. I'm sure uh, there, are, uh, there are more. Now, if you, if you want to, uh, uh, if you ask me as to what can we uh, 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 learn some more, I think uh, there are uh, quite a bit. Uh, uh, for example, uh, we really need to have all countries globally. We need to have national disaster plan with the preparedness and drills that uh, proactively deal with, with the situation. We have to have res research agenda uh, uh, to be there in the middle of, uh, of the outbreak. We need to use the learning health, health system, as I mentioned earlier on, so that we can generate real-time uh, data. Uh, this is available now, and the New England Journal of Medicine is, is even accepting those. And we need to strengthen our primary care. Unfortunately, we didn't learn that well in, uh, in the National Guard, but uh, I think at the national level, I would think that strengthening, strengthening our uh, primary care as part of migrating all, all the, the migrating, all that needs to be migrated into the periphery will be, will be important. Thank you, Dr. Saidi. Uh, we have to take some audience questions now, and I'll start with uh, the first one that I've got. Are there any treatments right now for COVID-19? I think uh, the, the answer is obvious. Uh, 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 thank you. Well, we are, we are watching this by the hour. Uh, uh, and the, and the short answer is uh, there is no cure. The short answer is that there is tremendous amount of potential that there's work in the pipeline and there are potential uh, treatments and uh, the methodology for approving, for, for looking at these treatments and approving them is very robust. If you ask me personally, for example, in relation to chloroquine and azotiaprine, I think what's being proposed, uh, there are two schools as you, as you, as, as, as you very well know, in the United States, for example, the president is, is promoting uh, the combination as cure, while uh, Tony Fauci, whom I respect very, I know and respect uh, very, very much, uh, says that the evidence still uh, not there. However, there are some randomized control trials. There are several, close to 100 randomized control trials using antiviral medications versus uh, uh, placebo that are ongoing right now. So the answer is uh, we don't have a cure, we don't have a treatment. Uh, however, it, it, is, it is very, prom the way things are, are going are promising, the potential is there, and the methodology of addressing them and uh, dealing with them is a total paradigm shift. A huge, a huge paradigm. So. Excellent. So it's a work in progress. Uh, so another, uh, Awad is asking, what's the systemic approach to pandemic before, during, and after pandemics? So the, that, that's the question. Well, uh, the... The, the short answer to that question is that we, this is a wake up call. This is a wake up call for each and every one of us. The, the guy was the question and all of us, the workers and, uh, and, and leaders in, in this system. It's a wake up call to deal with the health system as a complex adaptive system, to deal with healthcare as a complex adaptive system and honor complexity science as a robust science that we can learn from and that emphasizes, that emphasizes the feedback loops and relationships and systemness uh, in, 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 uh, uh, in relation to dealing with 
uh, rather than the, um, uh, the, the, the piecemeal approach that we have been using. Another question asks is about national plans. Do we have a national plan to deal with uh, pandemic effects on the healthcare system? Uh, there is a, a national plan. There is, a, uh, uh, there is, there are several groups uh, in the ministry working under the uh, leadership of the the, the, the minister and uh, the vice minister. Uh, they are meeting day and night. They are. Uh, uh, most respected uh, people in terms of leadership, in terms of science, and uh, of, obviously they are helped with uh, with with uh, the active brains within the the kingdom. So there is a plan, but uh, uh, I have to say it uh, very clearly that this is an evolving uh, pandemic. This is an evolving process and nobody knows all the answers. So it is going to be uh, act and then analyze and then respond. And anybody who, 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 who would read about the complexity science would uh, realize that there is the Kenevan, the Kenevan framework that divides problem into simple, complicated, complex, and chaotic. And there are ways, the, the cause and effect relationship in each and every one of those is different. And there are ways to deal with these. Now we are in the middle of a system globally and a system uh, that is complex, moving on the verge, on the border of chaos. And there are methods uh, to deal with it. And uh, one of the methods is to, uh, uh, examine it carefully and adjust and uh, evolve as the system evolves. So there is a plan, and in fact, there are several plans. There is a plan at the national level and uh, there is robust testing. Uh, this capacity is being increased as we speak. Uh, there is transparency and this plan is being examined and upgraded as the a global a pandemic uh, progresses and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and people are learning from it. Right. So another question asks about the applicability of system thinking. So Abdurrahman is asking, given the uncertainty ever evolving and many interconnected elements, do you think system thinking can be utilized in emergencies? An uh, emergency, um, Again, part of the complexity science is uh, to use uh, this framework. This framework will help you identify what sort of problem you are dealing with. Certainly, this is not uh, a, a simple problem. A simple problem is just like trying an egg where an algorithm would resolve it. A complicated problem is, uh, is like sending a man to the moon and all the elements are are fairly well known. And what you need is expert or group of expert that will show you the way. Uh, a complex problem, like what we are, a complex system, is when there are lots of unknowns and lots of unknowable. And in these, you need to uh, probe and then analyze and then respond. And then as you move, and as we are moving globally into the area of chaos, and this framework and this science tells you that you have to act, you don't, you don't have to wait. You have to act and we are globally, we are acting as some science, some science appear and then you modify accordingly. So this is the framework for complexity science and this is what we should be using. My point is that this is all there available and with a click of the button for each and every one of us. You finish now and you look at, uh, for example, the Kenevan framework. It spells out C, Y, N, F, I, N. It's, uh, it, it is pronounced Kenevan. It's C, Y, N, 
FIN framework. And it's a robust framework for dealing with, with complex system. And it tells you what is how to use it, what is behind it, the science behind it. But uh, that's not enough. What is, uh, in, the, in the last few days, I'm beginning to see that the complexity science people, the complexity scientists are now becoming alive and very aggressive. And they are getting together because they have been warning us that something like this is going to happen. Something like this because we haven't been dealing with the world as a system of system. We haven't been using the complexity science in dealing with uh, with uh, with with all the subsystems in the world. And if you again, if you uh, if you just go to the internet and uh, and then enter complexity science, you will find a lot of some very recent good work in relation to that. That's, that was very loud and clear, Dr. Saadi. So uh, we understand now how complex this is and how useful is system thinking and, and approaching uh, emergencies. So uh, the next question is for all the conspiracy theory fans out there. It's, it asks us about whether uh, you think COVID-19 is made by someone to kill humans or not. Well, um, I'll become a little emotional. <laughs> I, I hear these things uh, not in relation to this, in relation to 9-11, in relation to uh, so many other things. Uh, I think this is uh, it's really, really counterproductive. I think uh, uh, the available information to us is that uh, we are living in a complex world. And uh, there, uh, th there are uh, a lot of components in this world. One of them is the, is the animal kingdom. And there is a field called zoonosis. Zoonosis is that in this animal kingdom, there are diseases and viruses and parasites and so on. And they get to, uh, to, 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 to infect others. And there's this swine flu and the, and the, uh, uh, H1N1, bird flu, and, uh, and uh, MERS coffee, and SARS uh, uh, epidemic, and there will be some others. Uh, these, uh, uh, these, these viruses reside in a habitat for all likelihood. They have been living there for, for centuries and, and, uh, in a balance. And now, for, for some reason, there is a break in, in this in this balance. So this conspiracy theory is uh, a, a draining in terms of energy. If we really have excess energy, maybe we should spend it in understanding how complex system uh, work, what, uh, whether this biological system uh, connect with the economic system and with other, uh, uh, other subsystem and uh, what the, their relation, what these relations are and how do we deal with these relations and feedback? I'm very apprehensive of the time, and uh, I understand we only still have two or five or three minutes. Like, and I'm getting lots of good questions actually, and I would like to answer and get to each one of them. But I think we'll take two more before uh, we go to our closing. So, uh, here is a very good question, but in Arabic. هل المستوى الثقافي للأفراد والبيئة والوعي عامل لتحديد نجاح أو فشل أي نظام؟ بالتأكيد 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 يعني for the for the whole group globally there is there isn't enough understanding either of the complexity or the 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 biology of disease. And you remember that uh, the president of the United States in the beginning, he said that this is, this is a hoax and this is uh, a simple matter is going to disappear. Now, uh, a, lot, uh, a lot need to be, to be done in relation to, uh, to educate people in relation to awareness and in relation to our role and our uh, responsibility in uh, making sure that 
for this pandemic is explained to people and, uh, and uh, the potential for similar outbreaks is there. Excellent. So one more question. Uh, and it asks us about uh, applicability on the family level. So is it applicable for family planning and how is it connected to this? So, and the exact question is, what is the contribution of the systemic thinking for family care during the crisis? And how uh, is this a way of thinking will help, is this way of thinking will help in considering after crisis phase? Or this, is, this is a very, very good question. You know, a family is a complex adaptive system. In fact, uh, a child is uh, the prototype of, of complexity. I mean, if you look at simple, complicated and, uh, and complex. Raising a child is, is a complex problem. And a family is a complex adaptive system and the relationship within the family, the relationship between the family and the, and the neighborhood and schools and, and community and the workforce, uh, this relationship is extremely important uh, because uh, uh, through engaging the family, educating the family, the, play, the family play its role in, uh, in, the, in the social system and in, in the ecosystem and, and educating uh, uh, the children how to, for example, uh, 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 deal with, uh, with, the, with the ecosystem. And the, our, our next crisis may not be uh, a biological or viral. It may well be an ecological problem, as, as you very well know. So the family has a complex adaptive system, is an integral block, integral component of this multitude or diversity of component that the complex adaptive system is formed. Nice. So uh, last question. Uh, the crisis have, uh, gave us the chance to test the real system and face the gap. How to reflect on this with employees optimistically and how to sustain the massive great change afterwards? Uh, luckily, we, uh, we, we have been, we are, we are embarking on a whole system, a transformation. I mean, the kingdom has done something very, very, very courageous, and that is to uh, transform the whole system, transform the whole system in all its component as a system, not just the ministry itself, not the delivery part, not the payment part, not the digital system, not just the workforce. It's to address it holistically as, uh, as, as a complex system. So there are efforts that are ongoing to deal in each and every one. For example, the whole course dealing with the delivery system. There is a new care model of care that uh, is addressing uh, the primary care, for example, the uh, patient uh, uh, clinician relationships uh, and building a new culture of care. There is uh, the, the digital system is being uh, transformed and I hope that this will generate the learning health system as uh, I hope it does. The workforce now, as you very well know, as the leaders, leader of the academy, there are hundreds of thousands of of our workforce that are being uh, trained in the new capabilities in order to create with resilience with the system. So uh, there are massive efforts that are happening now. Now, this virus uh, only uh, just removed the lid and, 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 and made it uh, visible. However, it has been there that the need has been there and will be there and we are addressing it and uh, we're lucky that it's being addressed and supported at the highest level in the kingdom. The, as you know that with all these problems there is will, ideas and execution. And usually these problems falter because the will falters. And we are truly lucky that the will at the highest level is there, is committed within the vision that the results in so many ideas that we are discussing now. And finally, it will end up with the execution as happening in the transformation within uh, 
the vision of 2030. That was uh, very enlightening, Dr. Uh, Saadi. So uh, I would like to ask you, uh, what advice would you like to give to the healthcare leaders dealing with COVID-19 pandemic right now? And uh, not just here, around the world. Uh, so there's no, I, my advice is to think system, systemness, system thinking, system design. That is advice number one. Uh, because you would you would think that they do, but they they, they really don't. Let, let, let me explain it. Now you and I graduated from medical school. We were taught basic sciences. We were taught clinical sciences. But then there is a robust science. The third pillar of of, of health is health delivery science, and the health delivery science is extremely extremely robust. And that is learning about system and processes, learning about policy and economy and management, learning about uh, population health, learning about value-based healthcare, learning about uh, information technology and improvement science. And there is five cross-cutting uh, domains within that science. And these are scholarship and research, uh, leadership uh, and culture, uh, uh, evidence-based medicine, uh, professionalism that we really don't talk much about, and team and teaming. This, these are six plus, plus five domains. This is a robust health system science. This is a robust science that the leader could easily, easily get into uh, if uh, they really devote the time. The, the other piece that I want to leave everybody with is that there is a science uh, called complexity science. It was born fairly recently. This is now becoming as robust as physics and as chemistry and as biology. And this is uh, something that everybody needs. This is not something you are going to need to learn in a webinar. This is not something going to learn uh, from Sagittarius. But if you are aware of it, there is enough material. And if you devote the time and you look into it, and uh, we can all get together and uh, have several webinars or several get together and uh, deal with the science. But it is there. So complexity science, complexity theory, complex adaptive system, all of that is available. So system, health delivery system, system, system thinking, system design, system approach, that's one bucket. And the second bucket is uh, complexity, complexity uh, science, uh, complex adaptive system uh, in, in the second bucket. Thank you, that's wonderful, Dr. Saadi. Uh, I would like to thank you for the time you have put in and uh, it was a pleasure having you as a guest speaker today. Uh, uh, yeah, this is something wonderful, uh, talking to people about system thinking and approaches that would help leaders who are facing uh, this pandemic aggressively. We would like to thank all of them again. Uh, thank all the healthcare practitioners who attended today. And thank you personally for, for your efforts. And uh, I encourage everyone who's attending today to keep an eye on the Saudi Commission for Health Specialities website for the next webinar. And until then, thank you and goodbye. Uh, Sandy, before you go, I am truly, truly grateful for this opportunity to be able to, uh, to talk to thousands of uh, my colleagues in relation to something that is very close to my heart. Thank you very much. شكرا لك تساعد طاهر بامان الله